So what I want to look at is the specialized viral databases that we're going to use really for the rest of the module. Good thing about these databases is somebody has gone and curated all of the knowledge for you. So you should have some sort of confidence in the reliability of those databases. So the first one, so I've got Viper, there's FluDB, there's uh, uh, Influenza Viral Database of the NCBI, and then I'm going to go to DisAid, uh, and I'm going to mention the SARS-CoV-2 browser. Right, let's go to Viper first. Now, you will see when we come to the flu database that this is from the same organization and the same community because it looks pretty much the same. Um, a slightly annoying thing about this is it's got the viruses are classified by uh, their Latin names and whether they're positive sense RNAs, negative sense RNAs, double-stranded RNAs, or double-stranded DNA. So they, there's different types of viruses are classified in those ways. If you don't know about the classification of your viruses, that's a bit difficult. Herpes viruses, you're familiar with because that's uh, chicken pox as well as genital herpes. Um, there are featured viruses like Ebola, which is a hantavirus, which I can't remember, is that a bunya virus? No, it's my, I can't remember which classification are. Hepatitis C, Zika, and then of course, our favorite SARS-CoV-2. So the one that we're going to access from here is the SARS-CoV-2 uh, set of data. Bum, ba -dum, bum. Um, the Americans must have woken up. Right. Oh, those are the lineages we're concerned. Let's not actually go to there. Let's go to the full SARS-CoV-2 database. Come on. That's better. That's what I wanted. Not that one. Right. There's a nice picture of it. You. So it's got a spike glycoprotein on the outside. They're called glycoproteins because they uh, attach to have sugar groups on them, They're glycosylated. We'll come across glycoproteins in uh, influenza as well. So what you want to do is search through the data. Now, I'm going to search through sequences and strains. Now I have two ways I can search. I can search either the genome, or well, three ways I can search. I can search for the strains, but probably you don't know the strain name because it's going to be something obscure and difficult to know about. So let's stick with searching for genomes or proteins. Let's go to genome first. So I can search for genome data. This is a very simple form. So at the minute, if I search for the genomes of SARS-CoV-2, I will get 3,464,715 genomes. That's rather too many. So I need to cut that down to a bit smaller number of uh, genomes. Uh, if I clicked on that, I think I might be still downloading the sequences uh, the middle of next week. That's that's going to be a lot of data. My computer is probably not going to be very happy and I might not even have the hard drive space to download that. So I can decide to search using some criteria. So we can either look at dates, so we can look at a particular day or a week or several months. Now it's got these between different years. Oh, I think you need to be a bit more specific than that uh, because it's not going to work. Uh, I can also click this complete genome only button. So that will get rid of sequencing where you've only done a bit of the genome because I only want the complete one. So I was on 3 million, oh, I've managed to get rid of 300,000, but I'm still not having a good day. I 
can't download that many. So how can I shrink it down? So I could go to geographic grouping. So I can look at all the sequences that are available in Antarctica. Hope that gives me zero. That's a bit overly specific then. Let's go for Oceania. So that's Australia, New Zealand and the Pacific Islands. How many do I get there? I get 12,962. That's still not particularly manageable, but it's better than the 3 million. Uh, if I was to go to Africa, how many sequences am I getting from there? I have 5,068. Now that is a bit of a weird thing. Do you think that Africa has almost no sequences compared to everywhere else? Not really. It's just, does Africa collect and sequence all the things because do they consider that the most important thing to do? No, not usually. That's still not a manageable data set. Um, so if I was to do, how many have we had from Africa since? So if we go 2000 and so just this year, only in February, it shouldn't be that many. How many have we got now? None. That's slightly overdoing it then. So how many have been in the last year? What? Why did that return none? Ah, that's better. I'm down to 3,586. So that means there are 2,000 in the 2020. 1,481. Uh, if I was doing a single protein, probably I could go for that. But for the entire genome, that's too much data. Let's get rid of those. I can't just do 2022 because it's got none officially at the minute. Let's go and look at the UK. That's, that's where we're living. How many is that going to give us? 1,236,268. So that means a third Oh, over a third of all of the sequences in the database come from the United Kingdom. What's happening? So what's happening is Public Health in England are basically sequencing every single sample they get sent to them. They're producing massive amounts of data. So somewhere in this is Boris Johnson's sample from when he uh, tested positive for COVID. There's a lot of data there. To be honest, that's too much. Let's pick another country. Let's pick Austria. Let's see what they're doing. 280. That I can deal with. That's a data set which is approachable, so I can grab that whole lot. I can pick the host species which to be honest if i just pick bat ones and i do a search how many am i getting 33 that's definitely a doable so i could do an analysis of sars cov2 in bats uh interesting thing that's come up recently and culling in uh, hong kong is hamsters poor old hamsters can get COVID from you and then they can spread it back from them to you and they will have mutated. So potentially this is a bad thing to happen. So they've decided to cull all the hamsters. So there are five hamster genomes. You can do combinations of uh, years and geographic regions. You could do years, geographic regions and hosts. For how many gorillas have had COVID? I can't imagine it's many, bear in mind. Uh, I can't imagine lots of scientists are running around going, ah, oh, there's a gorilla. 
uh, I'm going to take a blood sample from them and see if they've got COVID. Gorilla might just slap you before you do that. So these are going to be ones in zoos. I'm also showing those, but it's ridiculously easily. So if I'm going to do complete genomes, I'm going to need to be very specific by combining years and locations. Now, if I switch to doing protein instead, then this gives me more options. Oh, I didn't I say there's also advanced options. So in, vast, in, in advanced options, you can do uh, month ranges and you can do genome strain names and I don't quite get why they've got this pango genome lineage. I've got no idea what on earth that means. Anyway, if I switch to protein, this is a smaller thing because I'm just I'm not going to get the entire um, genome. I'm just going to get a bit. Now, because I clicked on that, I end up with more options that I can click on. So I can pick the gene symbol that I'm going for, or I can pick the gene product name. So, wonder whether it's called spike protein. Does that work? Doesn't seem to be a set on that. Right. So let's look at their SOP, their standard operating procedure for how they do things in the SARS. So this is the genome. This is the name of each of the particular things. So this is how they've gone through it. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So this is how they generally process viral, viral polyproteins. So if I go for spike protein, I get zero. So I need to find out the name that they're going to be using. Now, luckily for me, I've got the genome browser open from the University of uh, Southern California. Uh, in University of California, what's SC? I've forgotten which city is in. Anyway, they have lots of computer facilities. They have a map of the genome. So if you look at the genome for SARS-CoV-2, it's broken up into these things. So ORF stands for open reading frame. So that means you find a start code on and you just keep going until you finish find a stop code on and you call that your open reading frame. Now there's two that overlap with each other. So 1A and 1AB. Then you've got this other section here, which is the S uh, gene. Then you've got these other short open reading frames called 3A, E, M, 6, 6A, 7B, 8, or whatever, Santa Cruz. Yes. So the fragment that I'm looking for, if I want to look at the spike, is called S. So let's have a look. If I can go back here, now I go for gene symbol, I should go for just S. Is that going to give me any results? Just thinking about it. <laughs> Still thinking about it. Yes, so S is a valid thing in there, but I'm getting 2.9 million. So again, I need to restrict it based on uh, geography and country. So what did we find? Austria gives us very few. 
So that gives us 303. So I can do that search. So I'm going to do my search. I'm going to have 303 S proteins. So these are the spike proteins that have been detected in Austria. So here is my table of output, which will go on for 303. So what I can do if I want to download those is I can click on it and say download. No, I'm not going to do that. That would be stupid. So what you can do is you can select all 303 proteins. Now I can download it. So instead of downloading it one at a time, I download all of them. Now, when you download things, they can be downloaded in multiple different formats. So there's this GFF3 format, which is gen-based kind of format. Um, there is the coding regions, faster format, and there's the protein faster format. Most of the software that we use for doing analysis uses faster format data. So you want to pick either the CDS uh, faster format or the protein faster format. If you have the CDS, it will give you the uh, a sort of DNA code, though it shouldn't do because it's an RNA virus, it just gives you DNA anyway, which encodes for the spike protein. So I'll go from the start codon to its stop codon. The format for the file definition line is the default. Now, you might want to take it as the default format, but most likely you don't. Now I'll show you what you can do now. So if you say, select default, uh, actually let's do a default one and let's do a download. It's still zero complete. How long is this going to take? Yes. Right, download's ready. It's downloaded it into my uh, home place. So it's, these are the CDs, so the coding regions are there. Now uh, results tar GZ. So first thing I got to do is extract the files. That's fine. So it creates this tar file. Then I need to extract the files. Has it extracted them? <sighs> Seven zip. Extract the files. So now it's extracted the files finally to this file with an awful name. So the first thing you want to do whenever you get files is work with them systematically and give them a sensible name. So what have I just done? I've just downloaded the spike protein from Austria uh, for, well, all time. Uh, from Viper. So I want to say what I've done and when. So I've done it in 2022 on the 2nd of the 2nd. Note the format that I'm using for the date. This is a standardized format that is the best to search with because then it doesn't get the problem that you have of European and American uh, months and day formats. So what it is, is year first, then month, then day. Then I'm going to say which database I got it from, Viper. Then I'm going to say what I search for, spike protein. And then I'm going to say what are the search criteria I did, which is Austria. And that tells me exactly what that sequence is and what I'm going to do with it. Now, if I open this with, I've installed Notepad++, which I suggest you all install with, this is what it looks like. So at the top line, you have this greater than symbol, which is the standard thing in faster format. Then you have the name 
that it's been stored in the database with, which is GBMW913369. You have the name of the organism, which is Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2. You have its strain name, which is SARS-CoV-2 Human Out 20, whatever it is, 201 protein. Then you have the protein name, surface glycoprotein gene symbol S. So this is nice. It tells me that the strain name is SARS-CoV-2 from a human from Austria, and then it's got this long name. Could you have guessed that was going to be the particular strain name of that organism? I don't think so. Then it's got the sequence of it, which will start on ATGs and go down. Then you get the next one. So 303 sequences in here. It has the same sort of thing. You have a unique identifier. You have the name of where it came from. You have this one's Aust still from Austria, and then it has all this stuff in it as well, 2021, and the rest is the same. Now, when we come to do some analysis later, when we create a phylogenetic tree, a useful thing is knowing what is the exact date that the sample was collected. Is the exact date that the sample was collected present in this header? Not really. So it tells you it was collected in 2021 and probably within here is the actual date and times or whatever. So this was probably collected in January 2021 and it is sample number 44282, but I don't know. So I haven't got all of the information that I really want to get out of that particular uh, set of data. I wanted to have some more information. So instead of just downloading it with its default, I'm going to download it by picking customize things. So the gene symbol really should be there. And oh, I have to add it. So the gene symbol is that unique thing. Um, Actually, no, the gene symbol isn't that. That's the S thing. Let's remove that. The GenBank protein accession number is the unique name thing. So that's useful. If I was going to cross-reference it to Uniprot, then I put the Uniprot one in as well. Now, we have that strain name. It's long. It's confusing. It's not particularly helpful. So we can get rid of that. If I thought host was important, because I collected data from multiple different hosts and I wanted to see how they're related to each other, then maybe I want to put host in. In this case, I think it's all going to be humans. But I said date was particularly important, so I want to have date. Um, I want to have the strain name included because that is a unique thing. Oh, and I wanted to have country included. Uh, probably I want that to go further up. So depending on what kind of question you're going to ask of your data, it depends on what things you need to download in this particular format. So in this case, because I want to ask questions about the date and I want to uh, know things about hosts and the country, I mean, I picked only from Austria. If I picked from multiple countries, then I could want to figure out the relationship between the virus in the different countries. So if I wanted to see which countries a virus had come from to get into a particular country, then I might pick the neighboring countries of a particular country. And then I could look at which countries they come from. Now, because of flights, that's a bit more complicated, but we can do those kind of uh, detections and things. So now I can do my download. So it will go and it will do exactly the same process of downloading. So if I go to my downloads, I've got another file, which is going to be called CDS, whatever it is, fast to run. Uh, one, because it's trying to do it the same number, I need to extract the files. So it's extracting the files into one.tar. Go into there and then I extract again. Uh, 
that, whoops, I've gone to the wrong place. And I go into here, and again, I've got my file, and I want to rename it back to what I had before. So it's to how to do, to do, Viper Spike Protein and Austria. Right. So now I've got my new set. Oh, I've just double clicked on it, which I didn't want to do. So I'm going to edit with Notepad. So now if I look at it, if I because I've got Mega installed, it opened it in Mega. Now if I double click it, you see that this is the header that I've got. So it's telling me it comes from humans. It was collected in 2021 on the 6th of the 4th. It was collected in Austria. It's SARS-CoV-2, whatever it is, all those names. And this is the unique thing that it's in GenBank. It's, that's its complete unique GenBank name. And you've got that for all of the different sequences, the 300 sequences in there. That's a much more useful file because now I can ask more useful questions about it. If you've got a Mac and you haven't got a PC, then you need to download the Atom editor rather than Notepad++. Notepad++ is great, personally. Right. Now, I've gone through downloading one type of file from one particular database. If you go to the influenza sequence database and do the same sequence and searching, you have a more sophisticated uh, interface. Now this is because, well, first thing that's a surprise is there are only 750,332 sequences here, not millions. We've been collecting flu data for 20, 30 years. And we have considerably less data than we've been, than we've got from influenza, from SARS-CoV-2, sorry. Even in the last year in the UK, we've got nearly twice as much data. We haven't been collecting a lot. So we've only been collecting small samples of things and we've not been doing it in any great detail. The thing with flu is it's a segmented virus. So instead of having a single genome sequence, you have different sequences for each of the parts. So the genome doesn't come as one whole, which is one continuous kind of chromosome. It comes as eight different bits, which means you can just grab the individual bit you care about, which is like grabbing the spike protein from before. So if I want to collect the HAs, which are the hemagglutinins, I just collect HA. So then the counts in my database immediately goes down to 153,152, because that's how many HAs there are. We're picking them from virus type A because we're only interested in A. If uh, the thing about subtypes of flu is they're easier to define. So they have numbers which are H1 to 18, N1 to 12. So if I do H5, that will find me all of the hemagglutinins which are in H5 organisms. So if I search based on that, I get 11,429 sequences. That's not particularly easy to uh, work with, but it is possible. Probably I want to modify the search criteria and if I change the host to humans, and then I do the search, I've got 468. That's definitely a workable number. I can easily work with uh, 468. You'll also notice that most of them are in the Far East. So I could also do 
apply geographic things uh, if I wanted to specific countries. So I could look at the spread of H5 in Cambodia, for example, or China or wherever else. So again, when you come to download this, so if I want to move, so I do my search, so I've got all this. So I want to do download again. Oops, I need to select them all. Download again. This time I've got even more uh, formats that I can pick. I can pick the segment fast, faster, which will give me the entire uh, DNA for that fragment of the segmented genome. So that will not only include the bits that describe the protein, it will also include uh, extra bits which are untranslated, both before and afterwards. Uh, I can have the coding regions in uh, DNA, or I can have the protein sequence if I want to get uh, protein amino acid instead. So let's go for a protein one because I didn't do a protein one before. And I've clicked on download. <sighs> now, again, I've made the mistake that I don't want to do that. So again, it's got a Qatar GZ. Let's go back because it's going to give me this stupid headers. And I shouldn't have pressed the back one. Now, let's change the search to criteria, H5. So I wanted it in humans. Right. Search. Get my 468. Right. So if I go to download, again, I want to have the CDs. Now it says, do I want to do custom format? Now I do again. So in this case, I want accession number. I want type, because I want to know, is it in H5N1, H5N2, H5N8? I want to know their types, because um, in influenza, you get lots of different combinations of H's and N's, which define uh, the, actually, that's the subtype of the flu, not the type, they're all type A. You can specify the date. You can specify the country. Uh, you can even specify US state if you were just looking at uh, US sequences. Uh, I don't need to specify host species because I only looked at humans. Uh, you can specify season because flu is seasonal. So 2021 uh, season is the winter season. So it actually begins in December 2021 and goes through till March 2022. So you can specify that. There are also markers to do with resistance to drugs. So adamantane resistance, ostella via resistance. Uh, so these are flu treatments that you might have. And the thing that's most important because I'm looking at H5 is this called the H5 clade system. So I need to add that too. And lastly, you put the strain name. So the strain name is a big, long, complicated thing. So now I want to download that. Now, the clade name is the same sort of thing as we've got with this Omicron, Delta, and so on. What you can do is you can split your sequences into different groups that are like each other because they have very similar sequences to one another. So what this will have in it is precisely that. It will have a classification of all the H5s. So where are we? So this was protein, faster results. So extract files. So I go into where's the protein tar? Go into there and then I do extract again. And then I'll get a directory which has my files and I want to do, oops, that's another thing I've forgotten to put in the other file name. I should have done two and, two, and this is H5 EMA, oops, blue. 
Boot in database was it the IRD and it's protein and it's human. So hopefully that tells me enough. So the thing that I did I forgot to put in the other file name was that it was uh, CDS. So it's the coding uh, DNA sequence, whereas this one's a protein sequence. So if I edit with Notepad Plus, now I see protein sequence, which you could tell because it's not a, just ACTG, it's the proteins itself. So here you can see the top. So there's the accession and where it's in Uniprot. It says it's influenza virus A. It's from Hong Kong in 1997. It's from H5N1. And its strain name is all of that. It's hemagglutinin gene symbol is HA and host was human. And there's my 400 and whatever it is sequences. Right, so Viper and FluDB are very similar to each other because they're created by the same uh, organization. 